Hey, welcome to Master Math. I'm the Math Mutt, and I'm here to remind you of a couple of things that'll help you get more out of these Master Math lessons. Be sure you know where your pause button, your forward button, and your reverse button is. If you find you're losing concentration, hit your pause button and take a break. If I go over something and you don't understand it, hit your back button and go back and listen to that section again. And when you come to a you try it problem, hit the pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Now let's learn some math. Today we're going to talk about percentage increases and percentage decreases. And you'll understand this stuff. You use it right now. Percentage increase means that the original amount increases by some percentage of itself. Let's look at an example. Here's a map of the globe and it's showing the increase in population as a percent for North America, Europe, Asia, etc. by years. So in 1800 the population in North America grew by only 0.7 percent. In Asia, however, the population increased almost 65 percent. So the population in Asia was growing at a much higher percentage than the population in North America. Well, we also have to understand percentage decreases, but you already understand this. If you go to a store and it says 20 percent off, you know you take the whatever the original price was and you can reduce that price by 20 percent of that original price. Percent of change or percent of increase or decrease is the amount of change divided by the original amount. It's the amount that the uh, number grew or shrunk divided by what the number originally was. We can write this a different way. We can say that the percent of change equals the absolute value of the original amount minus the new amount divided by the original amount. And what that absolute value means, and you know what it means, it means that we take away the uh, a negative sign if it's there. It means that we don't care if the increase is positive or negative. We just want to know the amount of the change. And the reason we don't care if it's positive or negative is because we're going to say over here that it was a percentage increase or a percentage decrease. Well, let's try a problem. The original price of the sweater was $25, but now it's on sale for $20. Well, the first thing you got to ask yourself is, did the price go up or did the price go down? And you can see that the original price was $25, and it went down to 20. So it's a percentage decrease that we're looking for. And we figure that out this way. We get the absolute value of the difference in the prices, 25 minus 20, which is 5. And we divide that by the original price, which was 25. So we get 5 over 25. And when we turn that into a decimal, we get 0.2. And when we turn that decimal into a percentage, we get 20%. How about this problem? The merchant bought the sweater for $20 and marked it up to $25. Well, let's think about that one. We get the absolute value of the difference in the price, the original price, 20, minus the new price, 25, and 20 minus 25 is minus 5, but we're going to take an absolute value because we don't care what the sign is, and we're going to put a 5 up there because that was the amount of change. And then we're going to divide that by the original amount, which was $20. And 5 divided by 20 equals 0.25, or 25%. Well, that seems a little strange. The price changed by $5 in both cases, but in one case, it's a 20% decrease, and in the other case, it's a 25% increase. Why is that? Well, just looking at the math, 
it's real easy to see why it is. In one case, the original price was 25, so my denominator's 25. In the second case, the original price was 20, so my denominator's 20, and my, my uh, final product's going to be a larger number because I'm dividing by a smaller number. Let's look at this graphically and see if you can understand it better. If I had $20, I could break that up into four $5 bills. And one quarter of those, or 25%, would be one of the $5 bills. There'd be three left. So 25%, or one quarter, is one $5 bill. But if I had $25, and I took one $5 bill out, I'd have only taken one out of one, two, three, four, five. I'd taken one fifth of the dollars away, or 20%. And if I wanted to take 25% of the way, I'd have to get more than five dollars. I'd have to go to six and a quarter. In those last two problems, we knew the original amount and we knew the new amount and we calculated the percentage uh, increase or decrease. But what if they gave us the percentage increase or decrease and the original amount? Could we figure out what the new amount was? Well, sure we can. In this problem, the original price of the car was $12,000, but that's on sale for 20% off. So that's $12,000 minus 20% of $12,000, or 0.2 times $12,000, which equals $12,000 minus $2,400, or $9,600. There's another way we could do this, though. We know that we're taking 20% off of the original price. The original price is 100%, and we're going to take 20% off of 100%, so we're going to have 80% left. So we could say 100% minus 20% equals 80%. And then we could multiply 80% or 0.8 times the original price and come up with the sale price. Well, what if the price was going in the other direction? What if they were increasing the price? The original price of the car was $12,000 and they raised the price by 20%. Well, we could take the $12,000 and add 20% of $12,000 to it, and then we have $12,000 plus $2,400, or $14,400. But there may be an easier way to do this. I've got 100% at $12,000, and I'm going to add 20% to it. So 100% plus 20% is 120%. And 120% converted to a decimal is 1.2. 1 1.2 1 .2 times $12,000 equals $14,400. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Your allowance was $5 per week, but was raised to $6 per week. What was the percentage increase or decrease? Well, first let's figure out whether this was a percentage increase or decrease. Based from your original amount, did the value go up or did it go down? Well, the original amount was $5 a week, and it went up to $6 per week. So it's a percentage increase that we're going for. And the formula is the amount of change divided by the original amount. Well, the amount of change is the difference between $5 and $6. And the original amount was $5. So $6 minus $5 divided by $5 is $1 over $5, or 0.2 or 20 percent. Now you'll notice up here that I subtracted the six dollars, the new amount, and I subtracted from that 
the original amount. And the reason I can do that is because I don't care whether it's a positive number or a negative number. All I care about is the amount of change. So I could have subtracted $5 from $6, or I could have subtracted $6 from $5, because I'm going to use the absolute value of the answer in either case, which is $1. Well, here's one you probably may not believe because you know as well as I that prices of everything just seem to go up and up and up. But here's a problem. The cost of a year at State College was $11,500 last year. But this year, it's $10,500. What percentage change is this? Well, again, the formula is amount of change over the original amount. And first we want to ask ourselves, is this a percentage increase or decrease? Well, the price of college went from 11500 to 10500 so it went down. So this is a percentage decrease. Then we got to come up with the amount of the change. Well, the amount of the change is just the difference between 11500 and 10500 And then we divide that by the original amount. And the original amount was 10,000, oops, no, the original amount was 11,500. So, we get the amount of change, 11,500 minus 10,500, and we divide that by the original amount, 11,500. And that becomes a, a thousand over 11,500. Now, I can erase a couple of those zeros on the top and the bottom. They cancel each other out and change this to 10 over 115. And 10 divided by 115 is 0 0.086957. Now, to turn that into a percentage, I have to move the decimal place 2 to the right, and I get 8.6957%. In most cases, you're going to be asked to round that. And let's say we had to round it to one decimal place. That's where we're going to round it to. We go to the next decimal, which is 9. And if it's larger than 5, which 9 is, we'd round that up to 7. And our answer would be 8.7%. cost of jet fuel is now five and a quarter per gallon. A year ago it was 20% less. Two years ago it was 10% more than last year. How much was jet fuel two years ago? Well, this is a two-step problem. We first have to figure out how much jet fuel was last year. And last year it tells us it was 20% less than the five and a quarter it is today. Now 20% less this is 100%. 20% less would be 80%. So I'm just going to multiply 80% or 0.8 times 5 and a quarter. And I'll discover that last year the price was $5 or $4.20 per gallon. Now, two years ago, it was 10% more than last year. And this is last year's price. So it's 10% more than last year. And it's 10% more, so it's 100% plus 10%, or 110%. And I convert that to a decimal, 1.1, and multiply it times $4.20. And I discover that jet fuel two years ago was $4.62 per gallon. Well, that's our lesson on percentage of increase or decrease. Now it's time to test your skill. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on percentage of increase or decrease. When you get done with the worksheet, go back to Master Math and find the quiz on percentage of increase or decrease and test your skills. We hope you enjoyed this lesson and come back again real soon.